Okay, what's up, guys? We have moved on from Attila in Europe, and now we journey to Africa. Well, sort of. We have, this entire campaign actually takes place in Spain. Well, I guess a little bit in France. But yeah, anyway, here is uh, Tariq bin Ziad. This is going to be the Berber campaign. And let's get into it. The Battle of Guadalete, or Guadalete or something. 711 AD, year 89 of the Hagira. I begin my day as the winds throw the sands up into a spiral, forcing the men and horses to sheathe their eyes and seek refuge. I cannot help but notice how the camels stand tall, undaunted. We are a people of the horse, but we have the resilience of camels as well. Invaders have swept through this land for centuries, and yet we, Berbers, have remained powerful and strong-willed. Despite our strength, we have only rarely ventured outside of our homeland on the path of conquest. That is about to change. A man named Tariq ibn Ziyad has sowed the seeds of ambition among warriors and simple herdsmen alike. When we prepare for war, Tariq is not as other men. Once a slave, he rose to become a brilliant general. Strong, charismatic and tactful, He's also a Berber like us. Thousands of men flocked to his banner, and men who formerly shunned the thought of venturing across the sea now eagerly board the ships destined for Iberia. With Allah as my witness, I shall truthfully record the events to come, for good or evil. Okie dokie then. Uh, march northwest to defeat Roderick's army. Killing Roderick will cause his army to lose morale. Minus 20 HP. Uh, restricted to the castle age and population limit of 120. And we are in the 8th century, so no gunpowder. Uh, yeah, a lot of cavalry units. Duh. Uh, Cordoba and the Visigoth fortresses are well fortified. Lots of fish. Um, and there is trade available. Okay, so our army is landed in Gibraltar. And yet to defeat Roderick. And Roderick's, you know, to the northwest-ish. and has just a big old army. Uh, Visigoth fortresses are to the northeast, like one's over here and one's over here on the, on the water, on the Mediterranean. And Cordoba is to the far north, and there are some random local villages, why not? Yeah. Upon this fruitful land, my Look brothers. at that beard. Our conquest of Iberia begins today! All right, so as you can probably tell, this is... The beginning of the African Kingdom's campaigns. And we plan our first African Civ in the Berbers. Well, North African. Oh, uh, yeah, just a really weird. His army is camped just across the ford to the northwest. Um. Yeah, so you're just, like, I feel like in all these scenarios, you just have, like, this really ragtag group of units that's just, like, one of everything. Anyway, Roderick's army will be right here. So, uh, let's fight him. I mean, this is kind of a staged fight. I mean, I guess you could technically lose it if you really micro poorly, but... This isn't this isn't a fight that should give you guys any trouble. Neither of you guys have any upgrades. Yeah, killing Roderick will lose like cause his army to lose morale or whatever, but uh, he's kind of in the way back anyway, so it's like you would have to fight through the entire army to get to him. Kind of begging the question as to why you're you know, what's the point of trying to snipe Roderick if you know you have to fight through his entire army anyway? Anyway, he's just uh, Roderick and a few few guards. So we'll take him out. Tariq is a genitor hero, but is a little on the flimsy side. I mean, the 15 base attack is nice, but uh, only 170 HP and 0 1 armor. Anyway, Roderick will, I think, actually be the last one to die. Uh, eventually. There we go. Hey, my brothers, let us construct a camp and seize Cordoba. 
the jewel of southern Iberia. Sure, sounds like fun on a bun. The ship of villagers has arrived from Suta to help us establish a camp. To work quickly. There is no time to lose. Nope. Anyway, you can see that uh, Ciuda is down here. They are going to be our allies. And uh, they will have these three transport ships here. Well, the first one already left and has the villagers inside. But there will be several more transports, each with a bunch of post-Imperial Age uh, Saracen units. I say Saracen units because um, you get like, I know at one point you get like camel archers that are like post-imp with Saracen upgrades, so you get like uh, Parthian tactics too, it's really sick. Anywho, um, now that we're sort of uh, getting past the initial stuff and getting into the, the meat of this first scenario, I must confess that I am not a big fan of this campaign. <laughs> It is a lot of infinite unit spam. Like, a lot of infinite unit spam. And I think the person who made this campaign also made, like, the Tamerlane campaign and the Surya Varman campaign. Of those, I think Tamerlane was the best done. Oh, wait, I need to bring Tariq here. Get some villagers. Where's Tariq? Where is Tariq? It's over here. Drink Tariq here, you get a few villagers. Anyway, you do have a little bit of time before everything gets your too hectic. Is just. Our stable will train your horsemen. Oh yeah. Our dock will build your ships. Definitely just run, run Tariq over here. Uh, there aren't too many locals, just, just a few, but still. Might as well get control of them. We are tired of fishing on food, and we'll follow you instead. Better. Um, there's a lot of shorefish here, actually, come to think. Oh, yeah, I guess I got all, all my pop limit from those houses and whatnot. Anyway, we are going to wall ourselves in, despite this only being a one-sword campaign difficulty, so this is technically an easy campaign. Um, this can be one of the harder campaigns, just because there's a lot of infinite unit spam. And as I recall, um, as far as, like, enemies go, I'm pretty sure there isn't a single enemy villager in the entire campaign. Like, it's only infinite unit spam. It seems that the Visigoths have yeah. scouted our position. Bolster the defenses and be prepared for enemy attacks. So, um... Is there more local village stuff? I thought we did everything. Uh, destroy the Visigoth castles to loot gold. Yeah, I think we get 2,000 gold for every Visigothic castle we destroy, which is something that would be a good idea to do um, beyond getting the 2,000 gold, which is nice. Um, they're also really annoying. <laughs> Oh yeah, let's uh, get a dock, because the Mediterranean has lots and lots of fish in it that we should get. Let's just get a few base cursory upgrades. But there are a few strategic locations that we can defend. So uh, we're, you know, going to do that. Pop limit's pretty low, only 120, but we do have access to cap grams, despite being stuck in the castle age. Hmm? Oh, yeah. More galleys. Yeah. <laughs> 
Definitely get some sort of fishing eco going. And there's, I think, only three choke points we need to defend. Also, there's a bunch of relics we can get on these random islands. In these campaigns, like I said, I th I'm pretty sure they're all done by the same guy, uh, Sir Diavarman Tamerlane, and uh, this one, Tariq. There's always like a bunch of random relics and stuff, and there's always like a dock you can trade at or a market or something. So you're never really going to run out of gold. But nonetheless, we still have a little bit of a slow start. Hopefully our tower is going to kill the ships. As we do start in Feudal Age. Okay. This is the only one we start in Feudal Age, though. Everything else will be in either Castle or Imp. Not my yurt! Actually, it is. <laughs> Gonna put me under pop limit. So, how many vills do we want with like 120 pop limit? Usually have around like 68, 70, 125, so I guess we'll have like 60 to 65 vills. Sounds good. Anyway, there is one more uh, area where we need to wall. Leaving the power of fishing ships to overcome all adversaries. However, what does make this campaign at least uh, you know somewhat bearable is the fact that you get to play as Berbers, and I really like Berbers. They're one of my favorite civs. Yes, here's the last area we need to wall. Uh, where's the nearest gold mine? Ah, here it is. Oh, come on. There we go. Get wheelbarrow and then click up. So, uh, Cordoba does train a navy as well, I believe, but it's a pretty small one and is only, like, defensive, so... Just need to worry about some more galleys from the Visigoths. But yeah, you can see the uh, their score is jumping up. If you see your opponent starting somewhere in the 20,000s of score, that means they have 9,999 of every resource. Uh-oh. Might need some fire galleys. Hopefully there'll be enough. Oh, okay. We can just sail on by. That that works too. Don't mind the fishing fleet. Anyway, if you're wondering why I'm not attacking with this huge ass army I have, it's because there's no real point. Like, why? There, there's nothing to raid because the enemies don't have economy. Just have infinite resources, so. Because I am, you know, stuck pushing through a bunch of walls and towers and whatever with castle age units plus cap rams. Oh, that's what they're going for. Might as well wait till I have all the upgrades and get at least one of my shipments of units from uh, Seuda. Army comp gonna be, you know, some variant of knight, camel, camel archer, that sort of thing. E. Berbers, lots of good options for them. Can two feudal age fire galleys defeat two war galleys? Probably not. Oh, uh, well, the reinforcements are nice, but the putting us over pop cap is not quite as nice because now we can't get any more villagers. At least not until we clear up some pop space. Actually, we do have to get them. Now you can see we've got full upgrades on them, Saracen full upgrades too. So I guess might as well start our attack. Can we get. We can totally get through on this side. Thanks, Mr. Camel, for revealing unto us the whole. 
Well, no. But yeah, we only have 34 villas right now, which is nowhere near enough. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have some more stone. Yeah. So, for a good old relation back to the previous campaigns, this takes place several hundred years after Alaric and Attila, around 300 or so. And now you can see that the Visigoths, formerly under Alaric, are now, you know, firmly in control of Iberia. And it's up to us to uh, take them down. Whoops. We must carry on the fight while you recover. Well, there goes Alaric. Don't really care. Really, again, I'm just mostly looking to uh, free up some pop space. Faster-moving Berber ships is quite nice. Gildans, that's what I was looking for. But yeah, as you can see, like, there, there's literally no point in raiding them. It's just fighting fortifications. Oh, good gravy. Now, if there's anything I really care about preserving, it's these post imp cav archers. But uh, we've cleared up enough pop space so we can fall back. Also... That's not very efficient. Should be grabbing a monastery because there are, like I said, a bunch of relics. And by a bunch I mean like three. Which, to be fair, is quite a lot. Oh yeah, can afford a castle now. How many fishing ships do I have? I keep on forgetting that villager count doesn't take into account fishing ships. That's seven. Put a castle over here. Help defend the water a bit. Because we kind of need to do that. I don't know, I feel like just these sorts of scenarios don't really lend themselves to very interesting gameplay. It's just kind of like, okay, I'll be building up a huge force, getting some siege workshops for some cap grams, and then just smashing through the defenses of the enemy. Gonna go ahead and guess three monks for three relics, obviously. But yeah, Cordoba isn't very aggressive, so we don't really have to worry too much about them uh, attacking us, mostly just the Visigoths. Well, I guess Cordoba is held by Visigoths, but you get the idea. Eventually our fire ships will trade well enough that these guys will all die. <laughs> Oh. 
See, capgrams. Yeah, there's some um, islands that have natural resources or mineral resources. Oh, screw you! And you! Fire galleys, fire ships. Anyway. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoops. Let me guess, they were chasing a scouting unit. That would be pretty likely. Sure, let's get Casbah. Still kept alive all the monks. Do you need some more gold income? Oh yeah, I should get some stables. Duh. You get him! It's gonna be worth it if we can get snipe even one production building, because that's how these campaigns work. Well, we still got the Siege Workshop. I call that a win. Alrighty. One potato. Oh yeah, they are going to be getting that. Archers, get one of those. Uh, there's a stone mine here. My transport ship. Another relic here, and then I think there's one more island over here. Okay, time to replace these siege workshops. Thumb ring. Did I ever get a university? Uh, up, oh, building one. That guy is pretty good, I hear. Whoops! So we're just gonna get all our upgrades. Pretty sure there's one more. I think I've played through this campaign a few times. I think I did it twice on HD and then once on DE. Bingo. Ah, 
was wondering where all my military was. Found it. They're really fun to control. They're really good in the castle because unlike Mangudai, I think they have uh, five less health, but they have one more base attack and one pierce armor. So they're actually really good against rams because if you think about it, they have the same base attack as a guard tower. Of course, Mangudai have the bonus versus siege and fire faster, um, so they're still probably a little bit better, but... Cam lurchers ain't no slouch of a unit. And in general, I feel like Berbers are one of the more underutilized sims in the game. I think they're really good. We'll just quickly shout out the fact that MBL won the the mono civ cup thing with uh, Berbers. More gold. Whoa, did you see that ramp? Whoa. Oh yeah, this is the this is the big one. Cause look at these. 110 HP. Oh yeah, I forgot, because you get Zealotry. Um because Zealotry does technically affect camel archers. So yeah, 110 HP camel archers. Yes, please. Unfortunately, I've lost most of my rams. You. Uh, I guess we could still use you. In case I need to go over to the gold later. Yeah, definitely do our best to keep these guys alive. 110 HP, 7 pierce armor, <laughs> 5 melee armor. Look at these guys nuke buildings. He's not hot or something. I don't know why I keep on getting night stuck. But yeah, you can see that Cordoba has barely attacked us, whereas uh, the Visigoths have been more or less constantly attacking us. Also, I'm pretty sure they have murder holes. Just to be extra annoying. Again, let's try and preserve these sick camel archers. Well, alongside our regular camel archers. <laughs> oh, well, can test the do they have murder holes theory. Of course they do. If you could make these units in multiplayer, man, oh, they'd be so OP. <laughs> But alas, there is no way for Saracens to get camel archers. Well, there's no way for Saracens to produce camel archers. You can get them by converting them, I suppose. Oh, 
Oh, uh, don't don't you do me like this one huskarl. I guess they don't benefit from McGrebby camels. Because, you know, Saracen units. But still. Also, in like all of these campaigns, like I was saying, they uh, every single enemy building pretty much is on a hill. If you notice here, every single building is uphill. It's just something I notice from like these sorts of campaigns, just to be as annoying as possible. Anyway, I think we'll get a couple thousand gold here. Yeah. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. That Hussar has been there all game, hasn't he? But at least they give you cap grounds, right? That makes your life a little bit easier. Get some more knights. You know, these, uh, these Saracen Camel Archers remind me of, like, those... What would it be like if you had, like, X Civ with Y bonus or whatever? It's kind of like that. Oh! Did I ever get murder holes? No, I didn't. Well. That was a bit of a mistake. Ah! What am I talking about? That did like no damage. They're at 110 HP. <laughs> oh wait, why aren't these guys attacking? I have no idea why this campaign is only considered, like, uh, one sword difficulty, but Yodit is considered three sword difficulty. Yodit's way easier than this campaign. And, of course, I can't actually take down the castle, because it's uphill. Oh, you know what? These guys have extra attack versus buildings because they're allied with uh, Seuda. Who is Saracens, obviously. I oh, know, I lost a Camel Archer! Are you stuck? No, you're not stuck. Why are you why are you right there? Now I would feel good about this being a very efficient trade if uh, you know, it literally mattered in any way. <laughs> like these guys can afford to take negative trades of a bajillion of every resource. <laughs> Let's try repairing that. Oh, 
Oh, come on. This is why I freaking am not a fan of these campaigns. Talk about just freaking running rams into fortifications. Uphill fortifications. Kind of running low on units here. Because I was hoping I could just prepare for my attack on Cordoba, but I can't yet. But yeah, just wait till we get to Corgo, but there's something there that's uh, just truly delightful. It's like they always try and snipe your rams, too. Tariq 2, by the way, the next one, is going to be very similar to this if you enjoy this sort of experience. Now what I don't remember is if they resign now or not. Might as well get back to repairing that. Also should prepare some siege workshops. As well as some stables. Wait, they do have a villager. I think they have a town center in there, but like the villagers don't gather anything. There's like... I don't even know what the villagers do. Or what their point is. And as of course you can see, they are not resigning, because that would make my life easy. I'm instead going to have to scrounge out whatever fire ships I can. Oh! Didn't notice that one. Whoops. That's fine. I have plenty of resources, I just need a big army. units that are throwing themselves away into my castle for no <laughs> benefit or detriment. <laughs> they just are. Oh, there we go, finally. All right. What we can do at this point is send our fire galleys to well. Have from oh yeah, here's our last batch of reinforcements. There's some Saracen heavy camels and some Saracen janitors. And now, instead of having to bust through Castle Age Goth fortifications, we have to fate bust through uh, Castle Age Italian fortifications, which are way better. Fun and engaging experience.
Literally, if the enemies just had finite resources, I feel like it, it would make these fights more engaging. Because right now, like, they can literally be just infinitely cost inefficient so long as they preserve their production buildings. And yeah, like, they're AIs and they're dumb, um, and we have these awesome Gamble Archers to help us out, but... I don't know. It doesn't feel like these fights are very meaningful, I guess. It's just like a slow grind to snipe production buildings. Ah, here are my ships. I don't know why I'm bothering trying to snipe a town center. It's just, it might produce the occasional villager that does nothing. Okay. Anyway, the castle here, can't see it, but, uh... It's surrounded by fire towers, and if you're not sure what those are, because they don't exist in multiplayer, um, they're essentially fire ship versions of towers that have less range. And the thing with them is that they're really good at killing rams. Okay, I think all the enemy production buildings over here are dead. Okay, you can see the outline of one right there. Here they are. And of course the castle's uphill, because why wouldn't it be? Along with practically all the other buildings here. Like, look at that ram melt. Like, I have 12 rams coming in right now, and I am not sure it's going to be enough. Here are the stats. Uh, 7 times 2, or 7 plus 2, really. Well, it's, it's, it's 21 damage. Since the number in parentheses is extra projectiles, not total number of projectiles. <sighs> we just got to use these cool camel archers. I could try and maybe run in with a bunch of cards or something, but that seems even less reliable. Yep, those 12 capped rams weren't enough to take down a only masonry upgraded castle. Well, and murder holes. But obviously most of the damage is coming from these fire towers. Anyway, I destroyed the stable just so that these rams would have not... Or they wouldn't be attacking uphill. Anyway, there we go, finally. There we go, finally. Cordoba is ours. You have fought well today, comrades. And by the will of Allah, we have succeeded. You bet we have. Thanks to these camel archers.
Anywho, that was it. He got all the support units from Seuda. He could have uh, gotten some gold or stone at these islands if he really wanted to, but it's not like resources weren't really our problem. It was just, you know, population efficiency, I guess. Pretty much uh, went through the whole map. And there we go, taking southern Spain. By fear and treachery, the slow physical forces fell easily to our agile horsemen. Thousands lie dead, and yet one cannot help but admire how the Visigoths fought valiantly and honorably to the bitter end. It is a melancholy thing to see their corpses left to the crows and wolves. As we entered the city of Cordoba, our men stared in awe at the architecture and riches on display. Now is no time for resting, Tariq tells us. There is much left to be done. That there is indeed. Anyway, that was Tariq 1, the Battle of Guadalete. Guadalete. I mean, obviously Arcade is super good. But at what cost? Uh, they somehow were able to field those armies, only collecting around 1,300 gold between them. Man, they, those guys are they are making some cheap units or something. Kappa. Anyway, the three relics definitely helped us, for sure. You can see when we got the uh, the shipments of units. And wait, next will be consolidation and subjugation. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.